Today, navies across the world use an ingenious system to land helicopters on the rolling deck of a ship at sea. It enabled the powerful helicopter-destroyer combination that has become the dominant form of at-sea anti-submarine warfare. It's the helicopter hull down and rapid securing device, or more commonly known as bear trap. Experience with HMCS Labrador demonstrated that helicopters could be feasibly operated from ships at sea. A flight deck and hangar were installed during construction and allowed for the storage of its Piaseki Hub 3 and Bell HTL helicopters. Check out my video about HMCS Labrador and her quest for the Northwest Passage for more information. They flew from the deck when conditions allowed, and the flight deck was comparable to one on land. In the case of bad weather or high sea states, the helicopters were grounded. They had no effective way of securing the heavy helicopters to the deck, nor moving them into the hangar without significant human effort. While the Labrador proved that helicopters could operate from ships at sea, it also proved that there was a need to develop a more effective and safer technique. The Royal Canadian Navy was looking to expand its anti-submarine warfare capabilities in the face of new, faster nuclear-powered Soviet submarines. Their destroyers weren't fast enough to guarantee an intercept, and so ways of extending their reach were explored. The RCN had two concurrent programs in place to address this, hydrofoils and helicopters. The RCN had been involved with hydrofoil research since the Second World War, culminating in the incredible HMCS Bredor. Superfast ocean-going hydrofoils held some promise, but even before the Bredor began trials, it was on the chopping block. Ultimately, hydrofoils were abandoned in favor of using ship-based helicopters. Check out the video I made about the Bredor for more information. The next step was to try to actually land a helicopter on a destroyer-sized ship at sea. It was a bold move. Landing large helicopters on a small ship hadn't been tried before. Previously, helicopters were carried on aircraft carriers like HMCS Magnificent and HMCS Bonaventure, but the RCN wasn't interested in operating a large fleet like that. Instead, they wanted to mate the efficiency of a destroyer with the capabilities of a helicopter. This would help to reduce cost and increase flexibility, as a fleet of many helicopter-destroyer combos could patrol a greater stretch of ocean than one or two large carriers. The Royal Canadian Navy's VX-10 Experimental Squadron, based at Shearwater, took on the job of developing a helicopter landing and handling system for ships. They had worked on the Labrador starting in 1954 and learned many valuable lessons. The early RCN helicopters like the HUP-3 and HDVs were unsuitable for sustained anti-submarine warfare operations but proved to be very successful in the Arctic. Now the RCN was focused on acquiring a more capable platform. This came in the shape of the Sikorsky HO-4S-3. These had a dipping sonar and had the legs to stay in the air for a meaningful amount of time. Trouble was, they were much larger and heavier than what had been previously worked with. To gain further experience, a small flight deck was installed on the frigate HMCS Buckingham. Successful landings were made with an HO-4S3, mirroring the success on the Labrador. A second flight deck was installed on the smaller destroyer escort HMCS Ottawa. A larger Sikorsky S-58 was used in these tests and again proved to be successful. This led to the conclusion that the destroyer-helicopter combo was a viable concept. It was decided that the RCN's new class of destroyer, called the St. Laurent class, would be modified to employ helicopters in an anti-submarine role as its primary weapon system. However, two things needed to be addressed. First off, the helicopters used in the test lack the all-weather capabilities necessary for effective anti-submarine warfare operations, and secondly, they needed a way to land and move a large helicopter on a pitching and rolling ship deck. To answer the first need, the RCN acquired the brand new Sikorsky CH-124 Sea King. It was a much more capable platform than any type previously employed. It could operate in all-weather and could carry systems to both track submarines and attack them. Check out my upcoming video about the Sea King for more information about its long, long history with the RCN. The Sea King is heavy, with a gross weight of 8,449 kilograms. This made handling it on a moving flight deck almost impossible without some kind of aid. 
Landings were easy as compared with trying to get the helicopter tucked into its hangar. With the problem well defined, it was contracted out to Ferry Aviation in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, under the supervision of the RCN. What they came up with was called the Helicopter Haul Down and Rapid Securing Device, also known as the Bear Trap. The system was composed of several parts. A probe and cable assembly, a control console, winch, power unit, anchor system, rails and shock absorbers. The first unit was installed on HMCS Assiniboine during her 1962-1963 conversion, which also saw the addition of roll stabilizing fins, a landing pad, fueling facilities and a hangar. How the whole system works is probably best explained by going over what a typical landing looks like. To start the process, the landing helicopter will approach from the stern and match the ship's forward speed, maintaining a hover just behind and to the left of the flight deck. This allows the pilot to see the deck and begin radio communications with the landing control officer on board the ship. The pilot then lines up to the bum lines marked on the deck. They're called bum lines because they line up their bums directly over them. A small messenger probe is then lowered from underneath the helicopter. A crewman on board the ship then grabs the probe and connects it to the hull down cable which comes out from the center of the trap. The cables are then retracted into the helicopter and secured at its center of mass. The pilot increases power as the winch operator pulls in the line to achieve hover tension. This allows the helicopter to apply tension equal to its gross weight, making it much more stable. The tension is maintained through a complicated system of winch controls and shock absorbers. The cable is retracted by the LCO and the helicopter is brought down to the deck, guiding its probe into the jaws of the trap. When it's safe, the trap closes around the probe, securing the helicopter to the pitching and rolling deck. A roll of 30 degrees and a pitch of 8 degrees can be easily managed by the system. Once secured in the trap, a tail probe is connected and the engine is powered down. After this it's now safe to fold back the rotors and tail pylon and move the helicopter across the flight deck and into the hangar. Tracks on the deck allow the bear trap to be moved regardless of the ship's motion. Takeoffs were a bit less complicated. The helicopter is moved under the flight deck using the trap and rails. Once in position, the engines are started and taken up to full idle. The tail probe is retracted and the trap is released. The pilot then applies full power and lifts off the deck when the LCO feels that there is a sufficient lull in the ship's motion. They then maintain a hover just above the deck to ensure that they aren't dragging any cables. Once given the all clear, they pull away and begin their mission. Daytime trials started in late 1963 and continued until 1964 using the new Sea Kings. Nighttime and bad weather trials followed soon after and proved successful. The other six St. Lawrence class destroyers were equipped with their landing systems and aviation facilities during their DDH refits. These were all completed by 1965. By April 1967, the whole bear trap system was fully up and running. The system would later be installed on all newly built frigates and destroyers serving in the Canadian fleet up until the present day. Other navies were impressed with the Canadian achievement and wanted a similar system for themselves. While their systems differed in some minor details and were built by different manufacturers, many other navies including the US, the UK, Japan and Australia were early adopters of the bear trap. Since then, almost every Navy operating helicopters from small ships used the basic bear trap concept in some capacity, the exception being the harpoon and grill approach, but this lacks much of the function and safety of the Canadian system. It really is the best way to solve the problem, and so the solution has been widely adopted. In fact, the bear trap is so successful that it hasn't seen any major redesigns or changes since it was introduced over 60 years ago. There have been advances in how the probe is handled, or in some cases not handled, and how the approach is performed and controlled, but the core probe and trap principle remains the same. This device may be little known to the public, but it stands as one of the greatest contributions Canada has ever made to naval aviation, and ushered in an age of helicopters at sea.